Peter, or <laughs> yeah, uh, how'd you get? Peter, did you see Peter just now? He was going around cleaning up all the plates. Uh, <laughs> he did. He went right around the table. Oh, one after the other. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. Okay, that sounds right. I, <laughs> I was a little worried for a second. I won't be long, but you, you know, when we look back at this, I, I went in the other day and I figured out we've... We met on, the, on September 3rd, 1960, which is really for us the most operational date. Uh, it was the Saturday before Labor Day, 1960, at 238 West 56th Street in New York. Uh, I had come off the road as a sales trainee with the, the VIX company, and Rolly had come over from Europe on a boat and was living with some Lufthansa stewardesses. I didn't know they were on the same floor. Over a short period of time, we learned that we were on the same floor. This was, I figured out the other day, 18,845 days ago. <laughs> <laughs> you got too much time on your hands. Yeah, yeah, right. we got to give him a job. That's what you do with an iPad, right? 18,845. Nixon when, and Kennedy were vying for the presidency. And I looked at, at that moment. You know, I had... Uh, come out of Northwestern in 1958, I had refused a job with IBM, I had refused a job with Procter & Gamble, and I accepted a job with this tiny little company called Vic Chemical. Now, let me show you. You know, Vic Chemical is the company that made this thing. <laughs> oh, yes. Vic, Vic's <laughs> Vapor. Vic's Vapor. Yes. And the reason I, love I, the smell. I did that because it was the most exciting company I talked to. The other guys were with it, and everything was buttoned up. And everybody said, "Whoa, you've got an offer, offer from P&G. How can you not accept it?" And I said, "I don't know how I cannot, but this is the most exciting place to go. It's much smaller, much more exciting, and that's where we went." And that, you know, I have a couple of things I want to say here that are that are kind of illustrated by poetic expressions. And I look at Rolly and the stuff she has done and the things we have done together, where she, the people say, but why, Rolly, why are you doing this? And she would give some sort of an explanation that was her explanation. I just listened. <laughs> and, but it was always sort of meaningful. And if you go back to Robert Frost's great poem, where he said, Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And I've, I've reflected on this for years and years and years, and I think if I would have gone with PNG, this would never have happened. I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And Rolly has done exactly the same thing. Here's a, a girl from Altenhausen in northern Bavaria who comes across and meets a young man from born in Colorado who had not been east of the Indiana border until he was 22, right? And we end up doing this kind of thing, you know, where we, you know, seven countries, five, four continents, three children later. Uh, we actually had the fourth, but we lost one in, in, in Paris, which was one of these moments where Rolly's basic character helped us through it. Our little Alicia in 1972, and we have Rolly's sister, uh, Lisa, who had a, their, Patricia, was born three weeks before our child was born. Uh, Patricia is there, and she's a delightful, wonderful person. And every time I see her, she was born on the 30th of October, 1972, and our Alicia was born on the 16th, or the 13th of December, 1972. She had problems and was unable to, she only made it through about 48 hours. But I look back at, at the, the, the test of that moment when all of our guys, we took them in and they all saw little Alicia after she had passed away. And Rolly's character, she has two qualities that over the years have absolutely flattened me. One was a, a certain unimposing spirituality, which, uh, I mean, Marilyn can sit here and, and her friend Georgette in, in France and, and others will talk through a, a, a mystical side of Rolly's which I have benefited from, because I didn't have it. She had this mystical side of spirituality, and she had a curiosity that made, she, she was never bored. We were in circumstances that you could not possibly imagine in Tashkent or Uzbekistan or Ukraine, where people don't normally go. 
And here was a woman that would go in and find a way. You know, I would go from office to office, right? The men do this. We go from one office to an, and it's, it's, a, it's a familiar territory. The women have to go in and find out where to find the milk. Nobody tells them. They are the real, the real strength of international business executives that move around. It's not the men. The men have an easy deal. They go right into the same routines that they were in before. I looked at this, and over the years we had a German aphorism which said, "Der Weg ist das Ziel," which means the path, the path is the destination. In other words, it says the way you lead your life is more important than where you're going. And if you think about that, you know, it's what you do every day that counts. It's not what you say I'm going to do tomorrow or three weeks from now. It's what you do every bloody day that's important. And this is what I've been living with. You know, my, my ad admiration for my partner is boundless. And it, it goes in too many dimensions. I have something here. I can't, I can't make it all the way through. But if you remember Elizabeth Barrett Browning, when she wrote, How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. When feeling out of sight, Vanessa, help me. Can't put it off. For the ends of being an ideal grace, I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need. By sunlight and candlelight, I love thee freely, as men strive for right. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, teas of all my life. And if God choose, I shall love thee better after death. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. You can understand why I couldn't quite pull that off. <laughs> but, but I, I can only. See, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. And if you reflect, you hear it the first time, it does something. You hear it, I don't know I see, wow. And it's, it, for us, it's, it's very profound, because we see things now that we didn't see 50 years ago. More deeply, more meaningfully, and it took all of this journey through all of this geography to arrive where we are today. And what I would like to do, find my little bag of tricks, <laughs> is here is a, a copy of T.S. Eliot's Four Cortex. <laughs> so, can you distribute the book for each of you? And I didn't want to be long. Thank you for listening to my questions. Oh.